Hello everyone. In this video, we will explain the formation of members under axial loading. As always, I have created a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post is given in description below. Here is our basic setup. We assume a cylindrical or quadratic element and this is the 2D representation of this element. So this shape is the shape before the force F is being applied. After the axial force F is being applied, this element will expand in one direction, in the direction of the force, and it will shrink in the perpendicular direction. Here we assume that the element is only constrained in this direction, in the y direction, and that it can slide in the x direction. In reality, a more realistic situation would be that we have forces on both sides and that the element is allowed to expand like this. However, this case is equivalent to this case, so this is just a simple representation. It's more simple to explain the axial deformation for this particular case. Our goal is to derive the formula for delta L for the deformation as a function of applied force, cross-section area A, that is, this is the cross-section area A over here, modulus of elasticity, and initial length of the object. This is the initial length before the deformation. So this length over here is the initial length. Now, there are basically several equations that we need to relate. The first equation, of course, is the Hooke's law. So the Hooke's law is telling us that sigma, or the stress inside of the material, is equal to E times epsilon where E is the modulus of elasticity and epsilon is strain. The second equation is, of course, the strain equation. So the strain equation is telling us that delta L over L gives the strain. So the axial deformation over the initial deformation is defined as a strain. And the third equation, of course, is the stress equation. So the normal stress generated by the action of the external force is equal to internal force over the area. And as we have explained in our previous video, P is equal to external force from the static equilibrium condition. So we obtain this equation. Now, Combining these three equations, that is, by substituting the second equation, the strain equation, in the first one, and the third equation, the stress equation, in the first one, we obtain the results. So, by substituting f over a in this equation, we obtain f over a is equal to e times, and by substituting epsilon in this equation, we obtain that this is equal to delta L over L. And from this equation, we can express delta L as delta L is equal to F times L over E times A. So the axial deformation, that is delta L, is proportional to the applied external force, to the initial length, and inversely proportional to the modulus of elasticity and the cross-section area. Now, the main problem with the previous equation is that it's only applicable to the simple case, that is, to the case that you can see over here, when the cross-section area is constant, when we have a single external force and with the modulus of elasticity and other material properties are constant. Now, the natural question is how can we use this equation 
to solve more complex problems that you can see over here. And we are going to solve this problem in order to clarify and in order to show that a simple equation can be used to solve even such a complicated problem. So the problem is, consider the object that's deformed by the system of forces. When I say the system of forces, I mean this force here, this force here, and this force here. If the values of the force F, modulus of elasticity, E, L, the length, and the cross-section area are given, compute the total deformation of the object. So this object consists of two pieces. The first piece is the piece over here defined by the cross-section area A and the modul of, modulus of elasticity E. The second piece is defined by the cross-section area of 2A and the modul of, modulus of elasticity E. And the goal is to compute the total deformation. Now, the first step when solving problems of this type is to construct the internal force diagram. So we need an internal force diagram. How to do an internal force diagram? This is a fundamental knowledge and fundamental skill that any mechanical engineer needs to know. So what do we do? We apply the basic principles of statics. We assume that the element is cut like this. And we ask ourselves, what are the conditions under which this piece will be in static equilibrium? Obviously, if there is a force F acting and there is nothing to counteract this force F, this side will just fly away in the direction of the force F. Consequently, we need to have an internal force P1 that will counteract the action of the force F. So, assuming that the positive direction is in the direction of the internal force, we can write a simple static equilibrium condition saying that P1 minus F is zero, or P1 is F. So the internal force generated by the external force F, that is P1 is equal to F. Okay, so let us proceed. We move forward. We move over here. Obviously, the internal force will change in this segment over here because there is an external force 2F acting over here. Consequently, we need to perform another cut. So, this cut over here is shown in this figure. What do we have? We have the force F acting, we have the force 2F acting, and we have the internal force P2 acting. So this internal force is introduced to counteract the action of the internal force 2F and F. And by assuming a positive direction in the direction of the internal force P2, the static equilibrium condition takes this form that you can see over here. So we have P2 plus 2F minus F is 0, or P2 is equal to minus 2F plus F, or P2 is minus F. So the internal force acting over here is minus F. Now, if we move forward, if we go further away from this position, we move forward and we pass this second imaginary cut, we reach the force 3F. Consequently, since the external force is changing, the internal force will change. So we need another cut. Here you can see what happens. We have the force F, 2F and 3F acting on the right hand side and we have an internal force P3 that counteracts these external forces. And again, applying the basic condition of static equilibrium, we obtain that P3 minus 3F plus 2F should be, minus F should be zero. That is, P3 should be 2F. So the external force produces internal force of 2F. And if we gather all the pieces together, we obtain the internal force diagram that you can see over here. So we basically have three segments 
and segment is defined segment is defined as a piece of an object for which the cross section area is constant internal force is constant and modulus of elasticity is constant we have three segments this is the segment 1 segment 2 and segment 3 so let's see how our internal force is acting. We could have computed the internal force is positive F, meaning that, that this piece of object will expand. Then we see that the internal force is minus F, the previous computation show, and then the internal force goes to 2F in this piece of material. Now, what is interesting to observe is that these jumps in the internal force diagram are equal to external force. So we have a jump of F because there is an external force acting here. Then we have a jump of 2F, that is from F to minus F, the absolute jump is 2F, that's exactly the external force. And then we have a jump from minus F to 2F, and in absolute value that jump is 3F. And finally, we have here 2F and the basically internal force diagram should end at zero. And this value over here is basically our reaction force at C that we didn't calculate. But you can simply calculate this, uh, intern uh, this reaction force by just writing ex equilibrium condition for the element shown over here and you can see that that's correct. So our internal force diagram is given over here and this is the first step that we need to perform in order to compute a total deformation. Now, so the total deformation of the whole system is equal to deformation of the first segment, deformation of the second segment, and deformation of the third segment. So we just add these deformations together. Now, we have to go back to our formula. To derived formula. If we have the situation like this, and if we apply the force F, our element will expand in this direction for delta L. Here is delta L, here is F, and this is the initial length L. We have discovered that Delta L is the external force times L over EA. Now, here I said the external force. However, that's not completely correct. Why? Because when we have derived the equation for the deformation, we have started with something like this. So this F is actually equal to internal force. So for this particular segment, yes, it will be true that the deformation will be F external force times L over EA. However, in the general case, this thing here is the internal force. So this value over here is actually the internal force. So the deformation of a segment in the general case should be internal force times initial length over what? Over cross-section area of a segment times what times modulus of elasticity again the formula that you can see over here in this form in the forms f times l over ea is only valid for this particular case in the general case you should remember that this f here is actually p is the internal 
force acting on a segment. So if we go back to our situation and our internal force diagram, the formula that needs to be applied here should depend on the internal force. So it's basically the internal force times the length over EA. Again here, the internal force times the length over EA and the length of the segment. And finally, internal force over the length of the segment over EA. But when I say A, I mean the cross-section area A. In this case, it will be 2A. So let's do that. So for the first segments, we, we have F times L over E A. Okay, so internal force is equal to F. The length of the segment is L. Cross section is A and the module of elasticity is E. So this is correct. Second segment, let's see what happens. Internal force is minus F. The length is L. The cross section here, watch out, is not A anymore. It's 2A. And this is reflected over here, and the modulo of, modulus of elasticity is E. Notice a minus sign here, coming from the negative internal force. And finally, in the third segment, the internal force is 2F, the length is L, the cross-section is A, and, it's, and the modulus of elasticity is Z. So this is the formula. So delta L total is the formation of the first one plus the second plus the third one, and if we do that, keeping in mind the minus signs, we get the delta L total. The total deformation is 3 over 2 F times L over E A. So the take-home message, the main thing to be remembered, is that this formula actually boils down to this formula when we have a more complex case. So the segment deformation in a more complex case, it's internal force in a segment, initial length of the segment, modulus of elasticity, and cross-section area of segment. So that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. Uh, please subscribe or support this channel, and I'll post more videos on strength of materials in the future. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.